Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm very excited to have you in uh, our AZ900 dinner time series. So my name is Rafael Gabmomo. I am a cloud engineer with over four years of hands-on experience in implementing solutions for Microsoft Azure. I have worked on solutions that required high availability, low latency, and other very fun concepts that we shall be looking about, uh, that we shall be talking about in the course of this series. So uh, first thing you see that as we uh, move along in this series. Okay, so um, for this series, uh, we have about six different models. Okay, so each model is going to be handled, uh, each model per day. Okay, so today we starting with the first module, which is Cloud Concept, and we're going to be ending it uh, on day six with Azure Cost Management and Service Level Agreement. Okay, so are you ready? Yes, I know you are. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, to start with, uh, Azure Cloud Concepts. So, uh, for Azure Cloud Concepts, we shall be looking at the cloud models. We shall talk about the cloud benefits and consideration. And lastly, we shall look at cloud services, which will include IAS, PaaS, and SaaS, and finally, the shared responsibility model. So, what is cloud computing, guys? So, cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet. So, I'd like you to underline that word, over the internet. What this means is that even without your own personal computer, you can walk into the computer shop, which is the cyber cafe. As so long as you lay your hands on the computer, you have internet, you can log into the services, you can use the services provided by a cloud provider to do what you want to do. So uh, it enables faster innovation, flexible resources, and economy of scale. I'd like you to take note that uh, every component that you have in your own computer, the computer provided by a cloud services provider also has those components. So uh, the truth is you can relate with me because your computer has networking capabilities. So also is the one provided by a cloud provider. You probably saved a movie or two or maybe a document or two in your hard disk. So also you have also, it means that your computer have storage capabilities. So also is the computer provided by a cloud provider. Uh, and I'm sure that you probably sat down using your keyboard, you typed a document and you saw it in Microsoft Word. Okay. So y what you are actually doing is, uh, your, your computer is capable of uh, compute uh, capabilities. So also is the one provided by uh, a cloud services provider. So let's let's move on and see uh, what this model uh, model uh, module has for us in front. So okay. So at this very time, we're going to be looking at uh, what a public cloud is. You probably heard of the word uh, the, that the cloud is someone else's computer. Guys, it is not a lie. It is true uh, because. Uh, a, a public cloud is owned by a cloud services or a hosting provider. So the one that we, 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 we're learning about and the one we're going to be using for all our demo is Azure, owned by Microsoft Azure. So the other two popular ones are AWS and GCP, owned by Google. So um, I'd like you to know that uh, a cloud services provider uh, allows users, okay, allows anyone that want to use to use allows any organization that want to use to use and there is no discrimination whatsoever and the services can be uh assessed okay so long as you have internet you can assess the services and the network is super secured so what is a private cloud so uh for private cloud you're just trying to create a cloud environment in your own physical location in your own data center okay so what this means is that you need to buy a land okay you need to get equipment so it, it's it's not like as if the other one you're using someone else's one uh you need to you need internet to log in access an account and use but this one you actually creating that environment in your own data center so it involves uh, a building involves uh computers involves uh, servers racks you know cooling and everything that uh, a data center would need to run okay so if you've done all these things you definitely will be um, responsible for uh, se securing them okay you'll be responsible for uh, uh, maintaining them as well so they do not pro provide access to uh, users of uh, other organizations so if your com if your company has uh, made provision for a data center it means that every only this the the only the staff of your company can use and self-service access is provided to all the users within the 
company so let's move forward so for hybrid hybrid is a combination of both okay so there are situations okay let me give you a typical scenario why you would want to use hybrid assuming that you're probably rock, running your workload in the cloud because it's cheaper for you and because it's pay as you go you use and you stop and you finish using you shut down the machines but you had a particular contract that is saying that okay let's let's say for example you got a contract from the Lagos state government and is asking you to save all the data of Lagosians in Lagos state at that very particular point if you save that data in the public cloud you get into trouble so that's a very typical yeah, a typical um uh, at that point you would want to save them in your own private data center in your own private cloud so you see uh, there'll be situations where you'll just have to use uh private cloud because of uh, uh, you don't want to run into trouble with the government because of uh, regulatory and compliance issues. So let's move. Uh, let's move ahead. So let's compare the three. So for public, you do not need capital to scale up. Okay. So you just need to uh, have internet. Okay. Assess the device and use. So no matter the amount of traffic that you have. Okay. The cloud service provider have the capability to uh, help you scale scale up. Or scale down whichever way it is okay so applications can quickly be provisioned and the provision meaning that you can uh okay later on when we get to one of the models i think model three you will see that we have a particular class of virtual machines which are called quick start okay even within two minutes you can you can spin you can spin up a virtual machine all it just requires is for you is just to put a username and a password Pew. A virtual machine is running every other thing has been pre-configured pre for you so one good thing about this is that you only pay for what you use okay now let's move forward so for private cloud uh, hardware must be purchased okay you need to buy equipment okay you need to buy computers you need to buy servers you need to buy yeah you need to buy servers okay you need to buy racks you need to buy uh, air, air conditioning you need to buy cool air, air conditioning for cooling uh, you need to buy networking equipment because there has to be internet okay so you actually need to set a budget okay so organizations have control, complete control over the resources so if you bought these things definitely they are yours and you have control over them no nobody will come from outside and tell you how to how you how to run your uh, you know your equipments and everything that you're doing so yes so you're responsible for the maintenance updates and all the other things so let's look at the third one the third one is most flexible because you can decide the, the, the previous example I gave to you you can make a decision where you want to put your workload okay is it cheaper for you to run it in the public cloud or oh or you don't want to get into trouble with uh regulatory bodies or maybe the people you got a contract from you okay so you prefer to put it in the in the in the in the uh, high, um, private cloud so you have flexibility of deciding where to run your application so you have control and you have control and and uh, and all that stuff so let's let's move let's move forward. so let's look at the benefits of the cloud okay uh high availability when you say something is highly available so i'm sure that i i don't know if you experienced it but i use mtn okay so mtn is my favorite network so uh, early last year mtn went off for five hours if not more okay so the next morning the ceo came up and he was apologizing okay that this is not going to happen again so why did that happen it was it happened because they did not make provision for high availability so uh high availability is just like okay you you, you have electricity you have electricity uh uh in case the electricity go off you have a standby generator to pick up and so that you have light okay so now what's fault tolerant means uh that that system had a uh, self-healing capability even though there is a fault the service will not stop it will still go on latency capabilities i'm sure that you all have banking apps okay you do not want to start checking your bank balance and you 10 minutes you're still struggling with it okay so uh if if it if it gets to 10 minutes that means the latency is high so you want the latency to be as low as possible why this why would latency be as low as possible because you want to save the data closest to the customer or uh you know save them in availability zones in case this is failing you want to retrieve from one data center is failing you can pick it up from the next available data center you see uh, also we will look at elasticity global reach global reach i want to give you an example of global reach okay so there's this bank i noticed kuda okay so they just started they have only one branch and it's called a fulfillment center where cats get dispatched out okay so um they they, they 
they have only one branch but surprisingly uh, they, they they open their services for uh, uk uh, customers and they're like entering they entered other african countries too why are they able to do this because they are able to save the customers the data that the customers will will assess close to the customers that's how why they're able to to do to, to do this so i suspect they're probably using the cloud because uh, for example if they want to um if they want to reach the Australian market, what they just need to do is to save the data close to Australia. Okay, so we also have scalability. Scalability, okay, so um, I'd like to tell you a little story. Uh, when I finished university, the first place, the first company I, I got a job was a games company. So um, now the dream of every game a company is to break into China market. So if, if, you, if you get, if you break into China market, if your downloads were, were 500, automatically you can get up to 1 million downloads and if you start getting 1 million downloads it means that your traffic will increase okay so if you made provision for 500,000 players or maybe 10,000 players and all of a sudden you're getting 1 million players it means that the machines that you're saving your data on needs to be very strong okay so uh, if they're not strong your game will crash your customers will be angry you lose customers and maybe the app store if they start writing negative reviews they will kick your your app off uh the app store so you don't want this to happen to you so with the cloud if your your traffic increases they have the capacity and the capability to make you stay if it reduces they have the capa capacity to make you uh stay as well to, so that nothing will go wrong so uh as we can see, uh, Microsoft is very secure. You have what they call Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Okay, uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud used to be Azure Security Center. Okay, so everything that you need to stay safe and secure uh, for both your on-premise and your cloud uh, workload, Microsoft has it. So you have agility, uh, disaster recovery. Okay, you remember the flood that just happened. Okay, so if you save your stuff in the cloud, even though your office complex gets submerged, you'll still be able to come out of it. So you have a uh, predictive cost considerations. Okay, in the cloud, you don't get thrown crazy bills. Okay, you don't just get crazy bills. You are uh, okay with Azure Cost Calculator. You can calculate your monthly spend. Okay, with TCO Calculator, you can know uh, your trade-off between using the cloud and using your on-premise. Okay, with cost management tool, you can get prediction on your next month usage. Based on this month's usage, you can get, you know, you can make smart, uh, you can make, uh, you can make a lot, budget a lot, you can print. So, in the cloud, things are not just, you know, done recklessly with regards to costs. Okay, so let's move ahead. So, at this point, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be comparing CAPEX versus OPEX. So, CAPEX is the money you spend on physical infrastructure. Remember when I was talking about uh, building your physical data center? You need to buy, 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 and buy. So, that is CAPEX. So, I'd like to tell you a little story. Okay. So, when I graduated from the university, I decided to reward myself with a MacBook Pro for graduating. Okay. So, uh, the MacBook Pro I bought that time has depreciated over time. To the extent that I've, I even have a new one now. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that the, the, the cost from CAPEX, okay, would reduce over time. I'd like to tell you another scenario, okay? So the, the university I, I attended, I noticed something, okay, because they want to keep their ratings, okay, they want to keep their ratings, uh, no, they want to keep global ratings, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are listed in times higher education, blah, blah, blah. So they need to, uh, actually change the computers in the computer labs every one and a half year so we we as the students will just be so surprised we just go to the lab and all of a sudden we see new computers so uh, the computers depreciate over time the computers depreciate over time okay so the computers depreciate over time so uh we also have uh, operational expenses so for operational expenses spend on products for operational expenses, you spend on product and services as you go, okay, and you get paid bill immediately. So the, the model that the cloud uses is OPEX. So let's move ahead. Okay, so the cloud operates a consumption-based model. What does this mean? I'm sure that you've probably, uh, okay, your recharge card, your phone, the phone that you, you're using, okay, so uh, you need to buy a card in the phone, okay. So assuming that you buy card of what one thousand era, okay. You finish making your call, you get bill immediately, okay. So also, uh, the place where I'm making this video from, or uh, where I'm lecturing you from, uh, uh, I need to buy card 
prepared ca uh, card in my and load in my in the meter if not i'm not going to have light so once the one i bought gets exhausted i have to reload it again so that's how cloud is so the cloud services provider operates on a consumption based model which means that that the end users only pay for the resources that they use so whatever they need is what they need to pay for okay so this makes uh, cost to be better for prediction or uh, it makes only individual resources uh, get priced and billing is based on uh, the usage so let's move ahead so uh, now we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the service models okay uh, so uh, the very first one we're going to look at is infrastructure as a service so it's it's a uh, it's a pay-as-you-go uh, service uh, that lets you rent servers, virtual machines, storage network, and operating systems from the cloud provider. So I like to use uh, the, uh, a scenario of a car, okay, to compare all the three. So there are three numbers. So this is the very first one. I like to use uh, a scenario of a car to compare this. So assuming that you finish, um, you probably got a job, okay, and the job is paying like five million euro per month, okay, and you walk into Kosciaris Motor. Because uh, I know very well that uh, a, a Mercedes Benz 2022, a Mercedes Benz uh, um, Jeep for 2022 is 45 million era. So you go to uh, Kosharis Motor and you buy yourself a Mercedes Benz 2022 model. Okay, so for spending that much, you would drive carefully. When you see a bump on the road, you'll uh, try to navigate so that you do not uh, get accident. Okay, or you do not get. Uh, uh, the car dented okay also you would want to go get your license so that you don't get into trouble with the police and when your fuel is finished the responsibility is on you to go uh buy extra fuel when the oil is uh finished the uh maintenance is due you will also uh have to be responsible for doing all that so that that the way it is with um with you buying a new car that is how it is with uh infrastructure as a service okay so let's take a look at the next one so the next one is platform as a service so i'd like you to have it at the back of your mind that for platform as a service uh is focused on developers so it provides environment for building texting and deploying software applications without focusing on underlying infrastructure so microsoft is saying that you don't worry about infrastructure just bring your code and do what you do best so i'd like to give you an example okay so uh, when i was in the university my parents came to visit me okay so i know the city better and i know that they will only stay for one day so i i i went to a car rental service i rented a car okay uh, i rented a car i drove them around for that one day uh, for the, the, the day that they stayed. I showed them everywhere and all that and all that. So it was easy for me because I just wanted to use that car for one day and would. So after after that day, I went to return the car. So the, the point I want you to note is this, okay? I didn't care about if the car was due for maintenance. I didn't care about anything that was happening to the car. I just wanted to use it for that one day to achieve my purpose and return it back to uh, uh, the car rental uh, service. So assuming that I had a big problem with the car, I could have just walked to the car rental service, uh, changed it and gotten another one. So that's how uh, a platform as a service is. So you just want to use it for what you want to do and leave all the troubles uh, with the car or with the, with the platform to the uh, provider of the service. So let's move ahead. So the next one is software as a service. So for so software as a service, okay, uh, for this one we have a prebuilt, a prebuilt uh, software, a prebuilt model for us to to work with, for us to enjoy. So an example of this will be, uh, you know, your 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 Microsoft 365, your email, your calendar. Uh, if you want to delve a little bit out of Microsoft, your Gmail, your your, your, your yeah, your your Gmail that is. Uh, so uh, let me use car also to illustrate this for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So assuming that you you uh, for your Uber, uh, you you want to you just okay. You have a car. You don't you don't want to drive. You just want someone to drive you. Then you uh, go to your app and you book Uber. So if the Uber comes, you just have to you will sit at the back. You will not care about the driver's license. You're not going to care if uh, there's a bump on the road. You not care about the, uh, if the, the car has papers or not. You just want to enjoy your ride. You want to let the driver take care of all the responsibility. So that's how software as a service is. So let's look at the next uh, part 
of the series okay so let's compare the three so the very first comparison we're going to make is IAS is more flexible okay because you actually renting servers uh, compute uh, network from a cloud provider so you can actually configure them and tweak them to suit what you want to do okay for pass you only fo you're focusing on application development uh, you leave every other thing to the cloud provider for software as a service is a prebute there's a prebute model there you pay for the software on a subscription uh, based model so let's move ahead so okay shared responsibility model so you can see that the green uh, are the ones that you have to do at uh, the blue you leave for the cloud provider so let's look critically remember when, when we talked about private cloud uh you have to go and buy everything yourself you'll be responsible for everything that's why it's in green you manage everything for infrastructure as a service you manage your data as analysis application runtime operating system and virtual machine okay so for platform as a service you remember that you're only working uh you bring in your application on your code okay so how you assess the platform and your application that's all that matters to you you leave all the rest to the cloud provider for software as a service how you assess the application is all you care about you leave all the rest to the cloud provider so i hope that you uh you got a high level overview of what we're talking about so let's let's move ahead okay so serverless computing okay so i'd like you to know that with serverless computing the cloud service uh provider automatically provision scale and manages your know, the infrastructure required to run the code so uh you do not want to worry about uh provisioning infrastructure you you want to just focus on what you want to do and let uh the cloud service provider use uh, knows how it does it best to uh you know make uh, infrastructure available for you so for for this for Microsoft, we're using Azure Function to uh, is we're using Azure Function for uh, serverless, okay? And so Azure Function is code running your service, okay, and not the underlying uh, uh, platform or infrastructure. So it, and I want you to know that Azure Function uh, it creates it's event based, okay? Your code will run if an event is actually triggered so i think in module not i think in module two we'll be doing a practical demo on this and you see it in you see it live in action so logic apps so um when you're comparing uh, logic apps to azure function you i want you to know that uh azure function is event based but meanwhile logic app is just for you to automate and orchestrate it has just has to do with a workflow okay so is has to do with orchestration of business processes and workflow okay when you need to integrate app data and other services so let's move ahead oh okay so uh, we've come to the end of uh we've come to the end of this uh model um i'd like you to answer a few questions before we go off so which of the model is tailored towards customers or all the products are ready to use okay so put your answer in the comment section which of the model let you let you as a user have more control which of the model is tell us specifically to uh, developers so i'll um i'd like to have your answers in the uh in the comment section so uh ladies and gentlemen we've come to the end of this today's uh dinner uh i'll see you tomorrow uh during dinner time for the next lesson thank you very much bye bye